Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of the Beauty Business Babes podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, hello, welcome back to my channel. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that little notification bell button so that way you can get notified of all of the juicy goodness that is to come on this channel. Today, I wanted to take it back to the basics, okay? And I asked the Beauty Business Babes Facebook group what you guys were struggling with. And one of the things that keeps on coming up and will forever come up, it feels like, it is not getting enough clients. So we're gonna do a two-part series here. We're gonna do part one, which is this episode right here, on why you are not getting new clients right now. So here are three things that you are either doing or not doing that is hurting you. It's hurting your business, okay? We need you to have your books filled up, okay? So thing number one that you may be doing or not doing that is hindering you from success, that is targeting the wrong audience, all right? If you listened when I first started doing this, I talked about identifying your ideal client. It is so crucial for you as an entrepreneur to understand who your audience is. And there's so many ways to do this and people talk about it in a very surface level way. But the main things that you need to know is who you are targeting in terms of financial wealth. Where is this person at income wise? Okay, that would be the first thing that I personally think of. Where are they at in their journey right now? So as a salon owner, we target a lot of brides. So they are willing and ready to spend the cash dough. Now we also target professionals, real estate agents, business owners, people who have extra funds to be able to take care of themselves, people who are in the spotlight, people who work with people in person. It's so important for these people to look good so they can feel good, right? So my target audience for the x Tan Salon is going to look much different than our audience for x Tan Sunless as a company when when we're selling to sunless artists, right? So let's dive into the salon just a little bit so you guys can get an idea of how we identify who this ideal client is. It's gonna be somebody who is between the ages of about 25 to 35. This person is going to be a professional, someone who is either on the camera a lot or somebody who is working with people one-on-one, -on -one, somebody who wants to look good, feel good, somebody who has a certain income level to match our prices. That's a huge one. You don't wanna to charge too much for your spray tan when you're in a place where the median income is much lower than it is in Los Angeles, right? This is why Jimmy Coco can get away with charging, I think it's $300 now for one mobile spray tan. His target audience, he knows very, very clearly that these people are successful, celebrities, influencers, they are rich AF, and they have the funds to match that $300 market Mark that he is promoting and he's successful. That's like the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this. You have to look at your geographic location. Think about the person that you want to serve. Are those people here in this geographic location? Because over here in Temecula, there are hardly any celebrities. There are a few here and there. There aren't that many. So that's not our target audience because we would go broke very quickly. Our target audience, again, they are brides because we live in wine country. A lot of people come in here and come visit because they're getting married. And guess what they need when they're here? They need our services. So we target brides. We target a lot of real estate agents. Temecula is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. So we really find these people that make sense for us where we are at geographically speaking. So I really hope that helps. A lot of what I've heard in the past is like come up with a name and that's all fine and everything. What hair color does she have? I mean, her weight could actually be a really good one if you're thinking about it. If you're targeting a plus size community and you are advertising that you are going to make them feel so comfortable and that they are welcomed in your home, aka salon, then you wanna talk about that, right? It's all about really understanding 
asking who you're targeting. Is that person attainable where you're at geographically speaking? And does this make sense for your business? Because if you're targeting the wrong type of person, aka celebrities, when you're not in a celebrity place, it's just not going to make sense sense. So find out who is around you, what they're doing, and maybe look up some statistics if you're still unsure. Look up what is the busiest occupation or the most uh, common occupation in your geographic location. What is the median age range? What is the sex? Like, is it more male or is it more female? Is there a large LGBTQ community? Is there something really specific? Maybe college kids. Is there something really specific in your community that you could be really focusing in on. And now aside from this, I know a lot of you guys might be listening and thinking like, well, I don't want to only target college kids. I don't want to only target females. Then that's fine. That doesn't mean that you have to not accept other people outside of what that looks like, your ideal client looks like, but it means that you should have the proper idea and vision of who you're speaking to through your messaging and all of that stuff. And it is naturally going to attract somebody that's outside of that ideal client avatar. So I hope that makes sense. If you need clarity, you know where to find me. This leads me to my next thing. So once you have this idea of who this person is, then you can come up with the appropriate type of brand. Is your branding on point to attract that group of people or that specific person? Is it? Because maybe your colors are off. Maybe somebody who is a business professional isn't going to want to go to a salon that has a bunch of really crazy colors or it looks like it's a salon that belongs for toddlers, right? So <laughs> Make sure that your branding is on point, matching who that ideal person is or that ideal group of people. The next thing here is your messaging. Your messaging might be wrong if you're not focused on targeting the right client. So if your messaging isn't right, if the words that you're using through your marketing, whether it's on Instagram, your website, any flyers that you have, if it's not appropriate for that specific person that you want to target, you need to change it up. And lastly, when it comes to figuring out who you're targeting and what can go wrong is that your offerings can be completely not right for this particular type of person. So for me personally, at the salon, we have a ton of people who come in as brides. These people are one-off clients. They are not going to come back if they don't live in our geographic location, which is actually most of the people that we deal with. It's a much different audience than when I used to live in San Diego, okay? We had a lot of locals and a lot of people traveling through San Diego, so it was a nice mesh, but over here we have a ton of people who are just visiting for that one spray tan. So because of that, our offerings have to be different than they were in San Diego. So now that we got that down, looking and seeing where you're at on Google is really important because we want you to be on the first page at the very, very top. If you are not, that means that you have to work on your search engine optimization. This is something that can be very tedious and it's something that I researched when I first started my business. I looked at everything on YouTube that I could possibly possibly fine and I started doing my own SEO on my website. Let me tell you that if I could go back in time, I would not have done this. It took way too much time, too much energy, and I was not the expert at this, but I did have an idea and I did learn a lot, which was great. So if you have the time and energy to do this on your own, that's great. If not, then you might want to hire out somebody to be able to do this for you. Another place that I would make sure I'm at is Yelp. I know some people have a love-hate relationship with Yelp, but I freaking love Yelp, you guys. Even though they hid like a hundred something reviews that were positive, that's okay because I still have a ton of them that are visible on Yelp. Get on Yelp. If you are a good spray tanning artist, if you give great spray tans and have give a great experience, I really wouldn't worry too much about Yelp. It's actually really going to help your business even now in the current day that is 2022. Number three thing that you may or may not be doing that is hindering you from getting clients. You are not making it convenient. I'm all about convenience. I have ADD. If something is not convenient for me in about two seconds, I give up and I go to the next person. 
Convenience can look different to everybody, but I think the main thing for me is understanding where I can book with you, right? So if I'm on Instagram and your website is not in your bio and I can't easily click on there, it's very unlikely that I'm going to pull up a browser and actually type in your website. It's very unlikely. So it's important on Instagram and other platforms that you're on for online marketing that your website is easily accessible. People can just click on it and they can know exactly what to do to book with you. Now, on your website itself, I've noticed, because I do a little bit of stocking, some of you guys don't have online booking, or if you do, I can't find it. So it's important for you as a business owner to have online booking, 100%. Like, I don't think that now in this time, and day, you should have any reason not to have an online booking system because it's gonna make it super easy for your clients to book with you. And not only that, that saves you so much time, so much back and forth, so much energy, right? So get a booking system, go to squareup.com, go to booker.com, go to Vogaro, Gloss Genius. There's a thousand million booking systems that you can use for your business that are very inexpensive and sometimes even free. Get this on there and what I would do on your website is make it very clear that this is where you book. So it should be on your header, your menu. It should say booking, book now, book me buy my stuff right over here. And a step up from that is don't have so much clutter. Don't have so much clutter and don't have so many distractions on your website either. This can be hard, especially for people who want to just give out all the information. I would suggest making it simple. Simplicity sells, okay? You're selling a service that is a spray tanning service. You want to show them why you're the best option, what your prices are, how to prep for the spray tan, what they can expect, and really how to book, and maybe some before and afters I think are very powerful as well too. So do those things, but everything else I think is secondary. I see a lot of like fluffy, fluffy, fluff, 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 and that's fine, but for the average person, I would say we are on the go, go, go. We are just trying to book, get some information, get a feel for your brand, for your messaging, and we're really just trying to get a feel for whether or not this service and your business is right for us as the consumer, okay? Let's see, what else do I need to talk about here? The other thing too, this can be a huge one and this is so annoying, I know it is for me. Sometimes your tech isn't working. Sometimes your links aren't working. Sometimes there's something that is just giving us an error when it comes to going to your website or booking with you or it's just not working. So if you can go in every so often or have somebody go in every so often and just make sure all your links are working, they're correct, everything is good to go, I think you're going to be golden. Also, if you find that there's a time where you're like, holy crap, I am so slow. What the hell happened? Where are all my clients at? Then you might want to check your tech. There might be something wrong, okay? So I hope that that helps. And I know I was kind of going all over the place here. Bear with me. You guys know me already, so... <laughs> I love to give you value, but you have to bear with my ADD ass. All right, so we got three things just to summarize it all up, all right? Three reasons why you're not getting new clients. Number one is you are targeting the wrong audience. Number two, you are not easily visible online. Number three, you aren't making it convenient for your clients, your new clients to book. Take a look, do an inventory, check your business out, especially, especially your online marketing stuff. Okay, I know a lot of you guys spend a ton of time creating content on Instagram, but I'm telling you, if you just spend a little bit of time focusing in on SEO and putting yourself on local directories and figuring out how to do online marketing strategies, that may be separate from social media, that's where the magic happens, all right? So I hope this helps you. I love you guys a long time, and I'll see you guys on part two. We're gonna be talking about why you're not getting return clients, all right? See you guys soon.